Recently, the people of China have had their eyes set on a meeting. This meeting not only deeply influences the Communist Party of China, but is also shaping the future of the nation. It is the sixth plenary session of the 18th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. What is it about this plenary session that has caught the eye of the Chinese nation? It is its strategy for the comprehensive and strict governance of the party, which is closely related to every single Chinese citizen. That's really impressive. But this is serious, right? Of course it is. Let's go back four years in time and see how things have changed. On December 4, 2012, the new generation of leading collective of the CPC Central Committee took office. It formulated and implemented the eight-point guideline, which quickly became a vital instrument for party governance. It offered guidance to party members on every aspect of party work and firmly rejected all corrupt behaviors, such as dining on public funds, misusing government vehicles, giving and receiving gifts, sending greeting cards at the government's expense, and so on. Of course, some party members and cadres still think that the eight-point guideline is not a big deal. So what, right? Is it that serious? The answer is an absolute yes. By December 31st, 2015, the CPC had 88,758,000 members. How big is this number? Take the whole German population, then add another 6 million people. That's how big. As the ruling party of a super large country with a population of 1.3 billion people, how will the CPC achieve its own comprehensive and strict governance? The new generation of leading collective of the CPC Central Committee is determined to begin from the work style construction. In the discourse of the CPC, the term work style is a tensed one. Playing League of Legends at the office? Shopping online at Amazon.com during work hours? Giving the masses the impression of being too remote, hard to talk to, and impossible to get to act? Or pursuing vanity projects that waste both money and manpower? These are all work style issues. The term lifestyle can also be a little sensitive. If you are a party member, you have to be very careful about your life habits. You are banned from taking and offering banquets with public funds, accepting travel that may interfere with the impartial performance of your official duties, taking advantage of weddings, births, and even funerals to receive and collect money, and so on. The eight-point guideline was first put forward four years ago, and it's more strictly enforced than ever. In the first half of 2016 alone, 20,159 party members and cadres were penalized by party discipline agencies for violating the eight-point guideline. Although these people might be crying their hearts out now, the general public is rejoicing and feels like sharing the news with the rest of the world. Of course, after hearing this, some people may ask, what are the CPC's disciplinary measures all about? Let me tell you something, son. In fact, discipline inspection commissions at various levels, being party organs, mainly refer to the party's disciplinary measures when it comes to penalizing party members accused of disciplinary violations. The measures for enforcing party discipline range from warning, serious warning, removal from party posts, probation within the party, to expulsion from the party. All right, son, let's get back to our time traveling. In the last four years, the power of institutions has also revealed itself. The CPC has successively issued norms and regulations concerning honesty and self-discipline, inspection work, disciplinary measures and accountability, which formulate vital institutional instruments for the CPC and its promotion of comprehensive and strict party governance. With the support of the Chinese people, some high-ranking tigers in the party, including Zhou Yang Kang, Guo Baoxiang, Xu Chai Ho, Ling Jihua, Su Rong, and others, successively fell to corruption cases and were strictly punished by law. This really brought Chinese people to realize that there is no house of cards in the anti-corruption fight led by the CPC. It's a definite game over for anyone who crosses the red line of the law or challenges the limits of discipline. How can we guarantee the implementation of a zero-tolerance policy for wayward excesses of power? Xi Jinping once said, power should be restricted by the cage of regulations. To this end, two documents were approved at the sixth plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee. They are the norms of political life within the party under the new situation and the regulation on intra-party supervision and they are exactly meant to keep on tightening the cage of regulations. Both documents adhere to the constitution of the CPC on a fundamental basis. According to the regulation, the party's senior cadres, being the critical minority, will be given stricter supervision. 
Of course, it doesn't mean that the objectives of China's anti-corruption campaign are easily achievable. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the leading collective of the CPC Central Committee, with Xi Jinping at its core, has created a new pattern in party building through work-style construction, institutional anti-corruption, and making other efforts on multiple aspects so as to unswervingly push forward its own comprehensive and strict governance. Eighty years ago, the Chinese Communists, along with the officers and soldiers of the Red Army, successfully completed their long march. Today, the Communist Party of China is marching forward again, along with the Chinese people, on a new long march.